So we are going to execute the plan of a port assault. A breach is added to the siege of Alexandria. Because that means we can assault it immediately. Do you think we should do it? The ter- What? The territory loses a fort? That's even better than that one! It's currently got no forts. And just seized it in a single day. <laughs> what? I don't even know what to say to that. That was insane. Hey! This is Feedback Gaming, and this is Imperata Rome again. We talked about the two playstyles in Rome. Either gonna blob out and you get really big and you're gonna paint the map with your color, which I must admit, even though it's fun to do, is probably one of the harder ways of playing Rome. Or you play tall. You stay relatively small and narrow. You can blob out a little bit in your region that you control, but mostly you contain your power within that region. The inevitable goal is you will blob out from that point in, but you spend the first quarter, the first 10, 20% of the game in a a small isolated position building their economy and your population and all your commerce into one refined spot you literally become hong kong or singapore or london if it was an independent country yeah something like that as you know feedback gaming is poor that's right, he's poor. Unfortunately, he has to drink instant coffee. That's right, the cheapest, the crappiest of the coffee of them all. But let's raise our hands to Feedback Gaming, and let's not forget he has a Patreon. The Patreon is linked below, which you get some really awesome rewards. Now let's sip. Drink. Mmm. Black, roasted, bittery goodness. Give me energy. Single player. New game. Oh look, politics. How fun. Ugh. The Mediterranean! Here we are again! When it comes down to selecting the nation you're gonna play, you should always remember if you are positioned next to a major power or wedged between several of them, you're gonna have a hard time. If you're down here in Iberia, Carthage is gonna give you a hard time. If you're in Gaul or Northern Italy, Rome's gonna give you a hard time. If you're in Greece or maybe in the Balkans, the Macedonians are gonna give you a hard time. Now, if you're here, probably Egyptians are gonna give you a hard time. The Macedonians above you are gonna give you a hard time. And the Carthaginians and maybe even Rome is gonna give you a hard time. You know what? My philosophy is... Go big, I'll go home. Serencia, we're gonna play as this one. They are a seafaring nation, they are Hellenic Greek tradition. The law of Serencia, Thracencia. Yes, we're gonna play as this nation. The die is cast. Strangely enough, even though it's a weird nation that's kind of like locked between nobody, it is actually a really healthy nation. You've got some good population around the border, but we're gonna condense all the population into a few areas to make the most of what we have. The first thing we're gonna do is a feedback gaming exploit. We're gonna erase all of our army, apart from a single cohort, just the one cohort. Assign him here, leader, we'll go for, it doesn't actually matter, it's actually probably beneficial if it's maybe a family member so they were, therefore they have a job and then we drill them this works very similarly to the way it works in house of iron 4 if you train a single division or in this case a cohort you'll gain xp for that one division and therefore gain more military experience which is very useful for greece because they have very good military traditions which we'll move on to that soon we've got trade routes uh we are going to make a few trade routes so my advice is import things that boost your economy early on cloth gives you extra taxation uh we also have gemstones which is extra taxation we have leather which is more slave output which is more taxation what we're going to do is import two lots of vegetables because that means we'll gain the bonus for vegetables and the bonus of vegetables is moving costs for slaves is 20 percent cheaper our ruler is currently not married so what you do first of all is hop into the government map and look at the stats the beauty of monarchy is, is that you get to marry someone that will supplement your stats i like to get zeal high because it improves stability and war exhaustion gets reduced too which is also handy if you're in those long prolonged wars but for now finesse is the stat to go for so finesse is number one so we will marry someone search for their finesse stat we have an eight it only gives us one extra point which is not ideal but she is really religious that's really good just marry her there we go look so she's supplementing three of my stats my highest stat is marshall she is three times better than me this is why we need women in computer games next one omen power and we are going to pray for taxation this will boost this by 20 percent. so we'll be earning what i want to go for now is build trade outposts in our capital region so when building up your capital there's a few things you have to take into account to get the most ideal capital okay i am going to show you an example of the best capital i personally think is in the entirety of the world you may disagree but you're wrong <laughs> and it is pella that's right the city of kings is the capital of macedon and it is beautiful because one it is in farmland Two, it is next to a major river. There's minor rivers, see the small ones? And then major rivers, which are the really big ones. Major ones are better. It has a port and is in a warm climate. 
Uh, the rule of thumb is if it borders the Mediterranean, it's going to be warm. And you probably question is, hang on a minute, Dave, what do these bonuses actually give me? Well, if you hover over pops, farmland plus 50% pop capacity, warm climate plus 40% pop capacity, major river 50% pop capacity. So they are your three main stats. We're going to entice business incentives. It costs 80 political influence and it gives us an additional trade route. The start of the game is relatively boring. You are going to build lots of trade routes. You are going to focus on your capital mainly and you're going to try and track as much attention to your capital route as possible. To take advantage of that, we are going to say governor policy, centralized population. One thing we have to take care of as our nation early game too is there's lots of barbarian strongholds. So unfortunately we have to deal with that now and build civilization effort. This will eliminate those barbarian strongholds. Is something we're going to have to do early on. The advantage of having a super city like this, a very tall city. Oh, Egypt would like to ally us. I think I'll accept that. The reason why centralizing your population on your capital region or your capital city is it means you can stack lots of building buffs. So as the buildings here, they give you all buffs for certain things. We'll also get import requests. Make sure you accept them at every opportunity. You want to export as many of your goods as possible early game. One thing to keep an eye on with Egypt is go political map mode and just check if they've got a claim on you. But if the AI starts to fabricate on you, my advice to you is to build a fort probably here and here. Let's start to think about long-term economic planning. Wow, economy. Got all the best words in this game so first of all we're going to demolish that fort we're getting a little refund and now we need to focus on what buildings to build in our capital region to make the most of the population who do live here the no-brainer is population capacity this number of plus four isn't just plus four this plus four also takes into account all these multipliers so all the percentages there will be added on to that aqueduct that's the reason why aqueducts are particularly strong so let's do it let's build a few aqueducts let's build four of those next up we're going to build a single academy now academy gives research we're building it because it gives population promotion finally libraries this increases the ratio of citizens in your population the current ratio is 34 percent and the ideal ratio is 35 percent this will push up the ratio just a wee bit higher. One thing else we could do as well is we could colonize along this Libyan coastline. We have to do it very slowly as the populations mature and get higher and higher and higher, but this will give us access to extra resources and extra pops, which is always going to be worthwhile. Next step for economic planning, we're going to go into trade goods map mode and look at what trade goods we have to play with. The primary trade goods you want to deal with initially are going to be food. So vegetables, very useful, livestock, fish. I think what we'll do is go for veggies. Step one, find location which has some food item. Step two, build farming settlement. Step three, move pops from around this province into this specific settlement. Be aware, do not depopulate areas. Very important that, because otherwise you're going to run into issues with having to recolonize land. So we're going to move two from here, from Barker. We're going to move one from here, one from here, four from here, one from here. One from here, one from here, two from here, and there we go. So now we have moved 15 pops into here, and now we are producing two vegetables. Two vegetables! Wow! And we get an export bonus for vegetables when we're exporting them, because it reduces the cost of moving slaves by 10%. You can see that? Surplus in capital, and the one below it, when exporting. So now we need to wait for an export. Exporting the veggies? Where's the export? Come on, someone request my vegetables. There we go. You'd like to buy vegetables, would you? And we're going to gain a bonus. Look at this bonus. And now when we move slaves around the country, they will have a discount cost of moving them. Nothing stopping us from colonizing further along the Libyan coastline. We get new research now. There's also cool research options to go for. This one's a really good one. Gives you an extra plus one trade routes. Reduce the cost of buildings. Always worthwhile. Remember, these are costing you quite a lot of money, so just be aware of that. Reducing tyranny is also good too. Now this is where things go a bit wonky. We have about four cities. The majority of them are in our capital region, but two of them are here. But the part of this strategy is to play as tall as possible. We need to try and move everyone to our capital city. And the easiest way of doing this is by revoking city status. Now don't do this lightly. The, you will incur a big chunk of tyranny and it will also piss the people off within that province. But the result of that is if you click on that nation now, you can see that they are migrating away. The best way to help them migrate away quicker is to go for harsh treatment, the government of policy. And as you can see now, pop migration speed is plus nine. And the result of this is these guys will migrate away quicker. Seeing as we're focusing it on this entire province, what I'll do too is revoke this one as well. Boom. The Egyptians' alliance is breaking with us. They plan to declare war on you, your ally, or your league member. Be prepared for anything. Yep, more than likely, they're probably fabricating on us now. Click on diplomatic. They've not got a claim yet, but that is probably what is coming. So what I'm going to do is build a fort right there 
and build another fort right there. There we go. So now we're more prepared. As you can see now, the cities we have demolished, the pops are now moving from those areas into our capital region. And we can build another library. Remember, keep an eye on the citizen ratio. That's the key number you want to paying attention to. You don't want to be demoting anyone down to a freeman or a slave. You want to keep that citizen population as high as possible. My advice to you as a Hellenic tradition, Greek tradition nation, is to work towards Victor's spoils, which gives slave raiding. Barbarians have arrived, and they're more likely going to march further this way. Yes, they are. So unfortunately, this really sucks. Uh, unfortunately, we have to deal with barbarians and Hera. Ooh, they're relatively strong. So the question is, what's going to be cheaper? Hiring the mercs, which is going to cost us 71 ducats, or do we just hire a bunch of crappy infantry? I think we're probably going to go with the crappy infantry. As long as we've got 12 infantry and archers, we should be totally fine. Change the tactics to skirmishing to get the biggest bonus. And we're going to engage the uh, barbarians now. And once we get at least 90% morale, we can basically engage them. I'll move here and then they can walk into us. We've got better troops than us, but we annihilate them. And they just chase them down. And dead. There we go, done. So again, I'm going to go on our capital region. We can build a new building here because the populations increase. There's a few things we need to keep an eye on. Uh, first of all, do we need to increase the capacity? Now, nah. uh, do we need to build more citizens? The desired ratio is 45 and it currently is 45. Yes, it looks like we need a library here. Otherwise, if the ratio was good and the pop cap was good, we'd go for an academy. But right now we're going to build a beautiful library. All right, we've got three more building slots right now. So we're just going to space these ones out. One, two, three. And then when we get the ability, we'll build another academy. We've got enough military experience now. We're going to work towards slave raiding. So we need to go for the next one on the way. We have a disloyal character. Now, normally I wouldn't care about that. But if I click on him, he has a lot of power base. So this guy, potentially, if he gets really upset, could potentially cause a civil war situation. So he's someone we have to deal with right now or it's just going to cause problems later on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bribe him. And now he has significantly more loyalty. And I'm also going to give him free hands for two years, which improves his loyalty for a, a larger duration. But the downside is he gains more corruption. When you build tall like this, you'll find that your capital region will eat a lot of food. We're not having problems right now. It's still actually producing food, even though it's near to 100 pop. But what you will find is you'll have to import more food, any of these food items, well, apart from salt, uh, to increase the food capacity and allow you to continue to prosper is this region okay so we need another five pops uh before we can get a new building slot i'm getting a bit impatient so i'm just going to pull a few from the fishing base in this case i probably would be better off building an academy the sweet spot for academies is around about five or six sweet spot for libraries and aqueducts is as many as you can build depending if you need more pop capacity then you go for aqueducts if you need more uh, ratio of citizens then you go for library you just go for what you need at the time so we're going to go into missions go for this mission tree consult the court and look at the areas it wants us to conquer and it basically wants us to push eastward by the looks of things yes it does 72 cohorts ninety-six thousand manpower it is going to be a rough fight. There's a few techs that seem worthwhile. Heavy infantry, siege, fort defense, army weight. These are all going to be required. Once again, get these out of the way uh, to make sure you don't need them when you're at war. Uh, you're probably thinking right now, 3,000 gold. That's ridiculous. Dave. Why aren't you spending this money? Trust me, you will go through that money incredibly quickly, hiring mercenaries, fighting a major power. This is the only thing possible you can do to go from a minor to a major and to defeat a major in this time span of the game. It does require you to be inactive for a large portion of the game, but from that point on, you can get pretty big and snowball-y. This is my rule of thumb, is focus on technology, which technology is going really well right now. We started off about 90 proficiency, now we're at 200%, so that's, we've developed our nation significantly. The sweet spot, in my humble opinion, is about level 8 for research. At that point, you've snowballed so much, you've got such a big tech lead, at this point you can start blobbing out and taking up territory. And uh, when you get to eight, and the reason why I love eight so much is one, there's some really good bonus for your military. And then two, you can lock out all the idea slots. They look, these ideas are all locked behind eight civic, eight auditory, eight religion. So you can get all the best slots and some spicy techs. Oh, oh, whew. whoa. And whoa, so many things are happening at once. I can't keep control of this. All right, I'll go through each step one by one. So first of all, don't spend all your military experience. If you're planning to go to war, I'll be at war at some point, okay? 
So if you're playing as this nation, like I am now, eventually Egypt will declare war on you and cause you a lot of problems. We're going to up the maintenance of our forts now because we need to make sure these forts are really robust. So the reason why we want to keep our military experience high and not spend all our points immediately is because to hire mercenaries is it costs you 10 military experience for everyone you hire. And in this circumstance, we're just going to have to hire both of them. We'll move them to regions too where they'll be able to get lots of money. We also need to hire a decent army as well. So we're going to hire at least uh, 12,000 heavy cavalry. Stock them up. An added thing to do is to change your laws toward mercenary contract law, which is going to reduce the cost of mercs. I probably should have gone for this before I hired the mercs, but you know, live and learn, you know. So as you can see now, now because Egypt's declared on us, we've lost loads of our trade deals and there's no one who wants to trade with us. At this point, we have to do the desperate thing is to suck up to people and build embassies in nations to try and get better relations so they're more likely to trade with us. All right, it looks like now the AI isn't coming to us. I'm going to make sure we select the right tactics. Uh, bottleneck. I love bottleneck. It's one of my favorites. All right, we're going to use our fat cavalry army now. And we're going to do a little bit of uh, slave raiding. We seem to have run out of food incredibly quickly. Oh my goodness, what's happening here? Let's just go back home and get some more food. Yeah, we need to gain more food. We didn't get enough food. Otherwise, we're going to take some crazy attrition. And our manpower's already taken a hit. So right now, let's start going from our ideas. Uh, first of all, probably morale is going to be the winner here. Yeah, morale. When it comes on to civic ideas... I like citizen output. This one is essential if you've got a large empire. Central urban spaces. Right now, most of our income is based off taxation. That might change at any point. So I think we'll just go for the slave output. And then finally, religious ideas. Monthly war exhaustion. Because that will keep us at war for longer. All right, we're going to make sure we get lots of food before we continue our little conquest. And always check in trade routes as well. A lot more people are trading with us now. Looks like the Macedonians have got better relations, so they're trading with us. I'm not particularly selecting who I want to trade with. I'm just looking for whoever will trade with us. Remember, the more trade routes we have, the more income we're going to have, and the long term we can sustain this war. Here we are, the first army, and it's only 5,000. Divide and conquer is very important, so I'm going to go on force march and just charge into them and completely decimate them. I don't want them to be able to regroup and form a larger army stack. Another 6,000 stack. I'm going to charge into that as well and smush it. I don't want it to get bigger. Heavy cavalry as well. Wow. Oh, and they're arriving. Push out in time. I'd like them to start sieging the fort down. Then we could just all gank them all at once. Yep, they're arriving. Good. And they're running away as well, straight away. We want to catch them though. So we'll force march. Now we've catched them. So what will happen is they'll engage initially and the other troops will engage afterwards and hopefully deal a death blow. The numbers are massive in my favor, so we're completely smashing them. Every time we siege one of these down, we capture some slaves, they go back to our capital region, and this area now will get more pops so we can build more buildings, so it'll stack, 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 stack. Caravan we've got going here, this little conga line uh, is essential, because the AI has a problem sometimes where it just appears out completely out of nowhere, ambushes you, and causes you hell, so keeping everything together is massively worthwhile trust me one of our armies has run out of food in fact both of them have run out of food <laughs> oh my goodness the problem we're having right now is this merc stack doesn't have a supply train and this one has only got one. Oh my god what a nightmare oh man okay this is like the worst time for this to happen but this might be the case it might need a few wars to soften up the egyptians supply train for you and two supply trains for you ai is deciding to do a runner i don't think so my dude i don't know why but i've rolled really bad merc stacks near my uh, capital region these are really awful merc stacks oh he's landed right here He's about to siege one of my main territories. That's not good. It looks like I'm going to have to rely on my own armies and then supplement it with mercs. But right now, I'm so burnt out from this. I don't think I can continue. So what I'm going to have to try and do is an emergency action where I try and take a capital region. Oh, this army is so big. But luckily, the good news is... Ah, oh, we're going to try and do it. We'll do it. We'll push in here and just go for the biggest fight in the world and just see how it goes. Oh, they're actually choosing to turn around. I wonder why they don't want to engage. And we'll take this capital region and see if we can get a really easy piece out. Right now we're winning as it comes down to war score, but they won't let they won't give up anything. So this is probably a war that I'm gonna have to purely play defensive in, because right now the attrition problems and the food problems are just too much. I am getting completely burnt and fried by food. I have never heard hide a merc stack before and it not have any supply trains on it. Not a single supply train. It could hold basically no food. What a nightmare. Conquering territory is a really good way of gaining lots of slaves. And as you can see, our pop is almost at the cap. So boom, build aqueduct. One other thing we can do as well to increase the growth of our capital region is upgrade it to a metropolis. This costs a lot of political influence and a lot of money. 
but it increases the uh, building slots massively. I think an extra five or ten building slots. And it also uh, increases the attraction to this capital and pop capacity. All right, once again, we're in the situation. We can bum rush them right here. And I'll order them to go back immediately. The AI really struggles with Force March. It doesn't quite understand that you can't get away quick enough, even though it will try and run away. So, in this case, you always win an easy battle. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh, they're here again. Another army to lose. Force March, right click, go. Are you here again, are you? Are you here again? Round three, is it? Get out of here. Oh, and they're coming in with a big stack too. Is this going to be a big battle? It is. Get the hell out of here. All right, at this point now, because we can white piece out if we wanted to, we can force a white white piece, basically. Uh, I want to be in a situation where we can take some land from them, so I'm going to go for that immediately. One, two, and three. So what we're going to do is go to the war goals, and we're basically going to siege down this one, and siege down, hopefully, that one. It might work out in my favor. Yeah, easy, easy, defeated. And then two, and then three... You're willing to give up that one territory yet? One. And they're willing to give up the two. Oh, damn. And they're willing to give up that one as well. Do it. Boom. Okay. So now we can disband the mercs. And now we have to go crazy building fortifications. I'm not even lying. We need to go nuts with the fortifications. Even destroying that farming settlement and building a fort here. Look at those beautiful borders. Super long blue blue long okay inventions we're gonna go for improved trade routes we're gonna go for less monthly wages uh we're gonna improve slave output all these ones that give us more money also what we're gonna do now is we're gonna disband most of our army apart from one heavy cavalry the truce expires in four years time january 508 and it is 504 right now my heir is a leper Ah, and my wife has just died. Huh. Okay, I guess we're going to go for another one then. Look at all those forts. Now that is a defensive line to be proud of. Okay, our truce with uh, Egypt has now ended. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into nation, into economic, and I'm going to up the maintenance. Here we go. This is the military tradition that we need, is the enabled slave raiding. Anyway, let's get a bunch of ships. Lemboz. I love the name of that ship. And we need at least 10 of these ships. And the ships have finished. Select them all. Move them here. And here we go. This is the ability to go for. Slave raid. So what's the downsides? This will piss off the nation that you choose to slave raid. You move your ship into the port and hit that button slave raiding. It will annoy them, which is not good if you want to be a mercantile-based nation. Also, you will gain aggressive expansion from it. So just be aware that you are going on a mission to pee people off. But what are the advantages? The advantages is you're going to gain tasty slave pops through the Egyptians. You don't actually need to be at war with them. I think, he's, I think you feel like you should be at war with them. But for some reason, you can do it when not being at war. And this guy has decided to become disloyal right this very second. <sighs> You you time this just right, don't you, my dude? You really do. You pick your moments. Here we go. Slave raid. We'll gain three aggressive expansion. It will move two slaves to my capital region. That uh, citizen's very unhappy. So one thing to do right now to ease the aggressive expansion is to change your stance. Now, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know this even existed, but well, we're learning as we go, right? Under this stance icon with the, the dove, you can select your stance. We want the appeasing stance. The way this used to work is you would always gain a flat amount of aggressive expansion, but now you gain one aggressive expansion for every pop that you steal. One pop, one and a half, maybe it looks like. One sec, guys, we're learning as we go here. There we go. Another one, another one. So now as you can hit the button multiple times, be aware of that. Boom, boom, boom. Because I think what you're doing is you're doing it with every nation or every port, maybe, possibly. Anyway, we have 40 aggressive expansion right now. My advice is at this point, please stop. Because everyone's going to hate you. And when they hate you, it means you're not going to be able to get trade anymore. And then it, you lose the purpose of having all these trade routes and all these juicy bonuses. Look at this. 74 pops in our capital right now. We've got an extra three building slots. How insane is this? And now also I'm going to go for the Blessing of Zeus, which reduces aggressive expansion rate. This guy is amazing. 10 Marshall, 10 Charisma, and 10 Zeal. 
He just, he's a terrible finesse though. Attention to detail is very low. <laughs> when he does something, he does it really well, but he has the very, very short attention span. Okay, how is Egypt doing? 97 cohorts, 201,000 manpower, and uh, not that much money though. So they have the capability of fighting, but they do not have the capability of hiring lots of mercs. If you look here, you can basically get an idea of where the population is. If you take out here, 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 and here, uh, I guess this one, I guess, uh, at that point, in Egypt's dead. Egypt is completely annihilated off the map. Absolutely done. It'd be very difficult to take all four of those in one war, though. Uh, probably because of the challenge, and then probably two, because the war score probably won't be enough. You can only take 100 war score in one war, and this probably is too much. One thing to be aware of, too, is if you want to go to war with Egypt again, you're probably going to need three merc stacks. So in this case, you can go into your mercenary screen and look for some guy who's got, like, godlike marshal. Uh, we've got a guy with 13 here. He's probably far away, though. Yeah, he is. He's in, he's, uh, in a faraway land. Alexandria. Oh, this guy's perfect. 12, two donkeys, camels, 12. That's a good guy. Going to go on some raiding again. Going to go for the areas of Egypt so I can soften up Egypt a little bit. It's not making a massive impact, but it just takes a little tiny chunk of the overall size of uh, Egypt. Already been raided. I think I've come back too soon here. Yeah, I think I have. So we're going to go further up river here. There we go. This is not the one of advantageous things to do, but it's important because you can see the food is going down in my capital right now, and that is going to cause problems. As your population of your capital region gets higher and higher and higher, it tends to be that you'll divert trade from foreign powers directly into your capital region to keep the population going. So right now we've got two transport routes into the capital. Once again, I want to import lots and lots and lots of food. So go to trade overview. Bring up the list of uh, trading. We're going to look for the ones that are exporting. Don't go Don't go for the capital region because you can't export from the capital region back to the capital region. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. And then Barker. Get rid of that one. Let's go to Carthage. And I think we got some salt to go into Carthage too. Vegetables and salt. Salt's pretty good too because salt increases population capacity. Popula food capacity, sorry, in capital. I'm just going to build up my military experience to at least 30. So that means we can hire three merc stats, two main armies, and then like a third one just as kind of like a backup army. And we'll hire it if we need it. We have really good relations with Carthage. I want to keep it that way. Carthage, 55, yep. Keep it going. And Carthage is doing really well. They're pushed into uh, Iberia. They've annexed their vassals. They've taken all of Sicily. Yeah, they're doing really well. That's a really strong Carthage. They normally get a lot weaker with Rome's dominance, but Rome is not doing very well. Oh, then again, they're at war right now. Rome consists of the uh, city of Rome, and uh, yeah, and that's it. All right, Egypt. Are you right for the plucking yet? Not really. I was kind of hoping to go into a war where he'd really badly lose, and therefore it'd be an opportunity to just completely stomp him, but that hasn't cropped up. In that case, we want to focus everything on our land armies to push into here and start capturing and... Uh, ripping them apart uh we have to rely on this army here and we can't keep pulling armies back and forth in situations where for instance they're dropping on top of us so we're gonna have to make a very jolly large navy a big navy and we're gonna pop loads of mega poly but they have a very hefty navy 116 so we need at least oof, i don't know we're gonna need at least 50 aren't we let's see if we can uh Build a bunch of those. There we go, producing five at each port. So that should be at least 50 ships then. Right now, we have a redonkulous amount of food. So what we do is we hold down enter and then we go. Duh, 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 duh. There we go, done. I don't remember allying Carthage, but apparently we've got a call to arms. And they're fighting a war in Italy. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll join the war, okay, Carthage? Do you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to boost relations with Carthage and send them a gift as well. So there we go, we've got amazing relations with the Carthaginians now, which is good, because if we want to go to war, we can pull them into the war with us, and that means we can uh, do some pretty crazy damage. I may have built a navy that actually is too big. <laughs> 57 maintenance for the fleet. Oh. When I'm running at a minus 10 per month, that really makes me a bit nervous. There we go. It is the ships that's eating into it. Okay, is there a port here? Yep. Here we go, 20 military experience. Okay, so we need to decide now what our main army is going to consist of. We definitely need four supply trains. And I think we'll probably go for 10 heavy cavalry. This is gonna be like a reserve army. It's not gonna be used for the main sieging and stuff. It's just gonna be to hold the back line. I need high quality troops because I don't have a lot of manpower. 
Uh, the fact that I've gone very heavily into citizens, it's kind of like left me open. And now we need to pull in some mercs. Let's have a look at mercs. No. Egypt's conquered most of Crete. Interesting. There we go. He's got seven. Oh, he's nowhere near as good. I need a godlike marshal, dude. Oh, there's a 12 guy here. He'll do. 12 guy. That's good. With two donkeys. Perfect. And now we're going to have to put the maintenance up for our navy too. Because so we're going to have to gain the morale. This is going to be the costly war. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so costly. We're losing 50 ducats a day. Ah, okay. We're going to have to go for the all out strategy here. We are going to have to push into Alexandria and try and take it within a short period of time. We got the forts, but we don't even have the forts up either. Uh, penalty to my income. It's likely we won't be able to maintain this war for a long period. Probably gonna have to delete this fort here. We're gonna have to find so many ways of like sustaining this war over a longer period. I think we're gonna have to bleed my own country dry. Oh, uh, there's no trade routes. We need more money. So we need to go for bleed it dry in my capital region. That gives us only an extra two ducats. That's terrible. All right, here we go. Let's declare now. Carthage will join us, so that's a bit of relief. We need to take the Western Delta, which is this one, Alexandria. We lose our wine. It's not the end of the world. Fish. And I'm literally going to bleed my entire country dry. Oh, my damn. Oh, no. Egyptian Navy I just spotted. Uh, Carthage hasn't joined us for some reason, even though I asked the call to arms. I asked him to join. There we go. So this is good because it means we're going to be in a bit of situation for... Uh, well, I guess if, if we lose our Merc stacks, we can just... We've got something to fall back on, I guess. He's building another fort in Alexandria. There's currently already one. Oof, good we've arrived just in time then. So we are going to execute the plan of a port assault. A breach is added to the siege of Alexandria. That means we can assault it immediately. Do you think we should do it? The te What? The territory loses a fort? That's even better than that one. It's currently got no forts. And just sieged it in a single day. <laughs> what? I don't even know what to say to that. That was insane. <laughs> that's so broken. Oh, they're just taking so many losses. I think that's it. These big ships are like, I guess like modern day battleships, I guess. I'm going to go for that city here. 53. 53 pops. That's amazing. I need to basically need to engage this army too. Oh, actually, this army is low morale. I'll go force march. And I should be able to do a lot of damage. Oh my god, we're playing ping pong here. The ping pong! Alright, uh, fleet maintenance down. And that means we're earning money now, so we can sustain this war for a long period. Ooh, the Carthaginians helped us there. So ideally, to maintain the eastern frontier, I'd capture this fort to get the full coverage around it. And uh, then at this point, I guess it's just pushing downwards, I guess. Alright, Egypt. Boom, 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 boom. And there we go. That's pretty much Egypt completely demolished. Completely. What I can do right now is whilst you're mid-war, this is a bit of a cheesy exploit, is go into diplomacy and change it to bellicose stance, which you can see reduces the cost of all war scores in war by 10%. There is also another method that's really useful too, is if you increase your tyranny really high to 100, that gives you an additional minus 50% uh, for war score as well. <laughs> Just gets ridiculous because you can take so much in one war. My advice is to you, if you're not really good at the game, is don't take too much in, in one war score because you're going to run into problems. But you know what? I live large. Live on the edge. This will make you a major power. A major power. Okay. Two events here to completely sack two historically important cities. <sighs> I will admit some of the bonuses you get from this are pretty awesome. If you look through all of them, look at all these bonuses. It's so spicy. <sighs> it makes me a lot, makes me really sad to do this. But <laughs> I'm going to have to go for the bottom one. The reason why the bottom one is the most advantageous is you're stripping these cities down by 33% of their population. Therefore, when you have rebellions, which more than likely you will have an unrest, they're going to be more easy to deal with because unrest is based on the percentage of unhappy pops. If these pops don't exist because they've been eradicated, they're not going to be unhappy. So the glorious city of Alexandria now is the pathetic city of Alexandria. Here we go. Done. All right. Is something to be proud of so my advice right now is you want to do harsh treatment against all of them because right now you're gonna have rebellion problems these population areas are so dense with pops they are gonna be ferociously unhappy that you've conquered them 
Kill this Merc stack. And look at what we've gained. Oh my goodness. I'm still triggered by that one area that's decolonized. But look at that. That is beautiful, right? And this is a horrendously powerful nation. So when it comes down to coloring the map your color, it doesn't look particularly aggressive what I've just done there. But remember, I have a lot of population densely packed into here. I start the game with like 300 pops. That's it. The, the entirety of my nation at the start of the game is 300 pops. Our capital is 362 pops right now. Just the capital and the entire nation, 2,300. We'll round that up to 2,400. Uh, this probably doesn't look like a lot. And this get, the game is still like 200 years from the end of the game, end date. So uh, you've got a lot of flexibility what to work with. And remember, if you subscribe, but don't ring the bell icon. It's like your subscription meant absolutely nothing. Hope you have an awesome day. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Krigu, Andrew, Chris, Carl, Mark, Rasmus, Robert, Rooney, Combat Cookie. I love you the most.